The Day Show. Sponsored by Onga. Everybody okay? Yes. Well, make some noise for the day show! Yeah. Well, yes, it's another week, and right here on the show, we give it to you, Buzz Buzz, from top to bottom. Everybody who comes here gives us something to keep talking about, and today is no different. In fact, our guest today has gone international with his Buzz Buzz. If you know that you are not for any LGBTQ conversation, then I don't know if this is the episode for you, but stay and hear from our special guest, who has made it known to everyone and has told the unvarnished truth about his position and his stance when it comes to the LGBTQ community. But beyond that, of course, he is a man of God. Uh, he serves in church and in parliament, and he has a lot of personality and charisma. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with that. My name is Bella Mundi. And well, of course, our furniture is proudly sponsored by Dr. Taz. Furniture, you can find them on the Spintex Road close to Manette Junction. Go in there, mention my name, and you'll get a good deal. And this is quality, I assure you. But also, DJ Filter is here. <laughs> and, well, I, I have a little surprise for him and for you watching at home as well. So when we get back, maybe you'll find that out. And we also have the BU question of the day. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Furniture on the Day Show is sponsored by Alfimo GH. And it's time now for the BU segment. Remember, we have DJ Filter and, of course, Honorable Sam George. <laughs> Who's ready for the question of the day? There you are. Talk to me, Your Majesty. My name is Belinda. Ah. I must say you look so awesome. Oh, thank you, Belinda. <laughs> please, please, I want to ask, how do you overcome your challenges and keep motivated when things get tough? Sometimes I don't overcome them. But thank you for your question. Please have a seat. I don't okay, want to stress you. thank you. Sometimes I don't overcome, overcome them, but I still go through life anyway. And I tell myself that, okay, you may have lost this or this has been too difficult for you. It doesn't matter. There's a new day. Something else will happen that will make life easier for you. So days when they're really tough, I just look at the glass half full. Because that way you know that there's, there are better days ahead of you and things will get better. But sometimes when I, I, I have to overcome a challenge, I have to do everything possible to make sure I do. So you need to learn, okay, why did I make this mistake? Why is this happening to me? Is there something I can do to change it? If there's something I can do to change it, I will. If there's nothing I can do, go and sleep, wake up. The next day, God will bless you with something good. That's just how I live my life, okay? So that's about it. All right. And well, let's take a look at our video. And well, he usually plays on the show as our official DJ. But this time around, we thought, why not give him the opportunity to tell you a bit about himself? And so, are you ready for DJ Filter? <laughs> Charlie? A whole DJ, you can't even play music for yourself to come on your own show. How are you doing? I'm good. But I've, I've met you already this morning. I've hugged you. Why am I hugging you again? It's have a seat, have a seat, have Thank a seat. You. Okay, DJ Floor Manager, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Filter? I'm good. So every time you play on this show and you hear people tell the amazing stories, yeah. what is your story? All right, hmm. my story is a big shout out to my uncle. He motivated me to do this. Oh, okay, yeah, to become yeah. a DJ. Yeah. How come? What led to him motivating you? Um, he's the music type. So way back when I was a child, like he always tried to tell me, I should just follow what I want to do. Mm. Because my parents, my mom and my uncles would be like, go to school, make sure you learn, like the kind of thing. But even though I completed Accra Technical University in 2019, mm. Procurement and Supply Chain Management. Oh, nice. So after that, okay, let me say I just learned this whole thing when I go to the tertiary. Okay, who taught you? I had a, a, a big master, let me say. Big shout to DJ Trigger. Mm. Where's he at the moment? Yes. 
He's at Tema. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. that's um. He works with Rampage ah. before then, so. So he taught you how to play. He taught me everything. Like I love music though, but I didn't have any passion for it. Mm. But when I got to campus, I saw him Charlie hard. It's mm. like, oh, I need to learn. And that's just how it started for that's you. All. So you've been playing for how many years? Um, this is uh, my sixth year. Sis? Yeah. And now you're making money. Are you are you charging one thousand dollars per <laughs> per gig or something? It's step by step. Step by step. We are not but is it is it a lucrative job? Yeah. It is. Ghanaians understand the need to pay a DJ to play good music for them. Let me say some Ghanaians. Some Not Ghanians. everybody. So there are days when people hire you and they don't want to pay? Some would want to always give an excuse, but I've gotten to the level that whereby I understand the fact that I need to get my percentage before I go to work. Okay. No percentage. So I'm usually what percentage do you take before so you So it's 70% on bookings, 30% a week before the event. Hey! Wait, what? A whole week before the event? Yes, the week before the event. So let's say I pay you 70%. On the day I book you, sure. I confirm that you're playing. Sure. 70%. Yeah. Then a week to the time, I don't have the 30. And I tell you, I'll pay you the 30 on the day. Then I'll make sure, when, when I get to the event center, I make sure I get a 30 before I start working. Otherwise, you're not going to play. play. Well, have there been times when people have lied to you? Yeah, people will be like, after the show. But honestly, it doesn't work. So what do you do to them when they refuse to pay? No, I can't do anything to them. It's your money, but sometimes you keep chasing and you get fed up. Yeah. Because you always have to be called them. Some will always be giving you excuses and other stuff. So, so mm -hmm. when I get there, if it's either you give me the 30% or I'm not working. I see. Who are some of the big personalities or artists that you've played with? So far, I'm the current um, DJ for Mr. Drew. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. And prior to that, have you worked with other artists? Yeah, I've worked with Papi Kojo before. Oh, nice. Yeah, way back. That was a Winnie Bar. Yeah. Mm. But these are, so far, I think this is one of them. What's it like working with Mr. Drew? Oh, it's, it's, it sounds good. Mm. It sounds good because I never, I never expected, I never saw myself going to work with the artists. Why do you say that? Yeah, because even though I have a dream, I have a picture for myself, but it wasn't the artist's picture. Ah. So for the artist to come in, it's a plus. Mm -hmm. And big shout out to Mr. Drew. He has always been good to me. Yeah. Do, 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 you, do you think that the day show is a joke to you? No, the day show. Because I asked you which personalities have you worked with. No, 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 you no. You said no, Mr. No. Drew. No, no. Papi Kojo. No, no. Day show. <laughs> Bella Mundi. You didn't say. Oh. Why? Me. What have I done I'm to you? big shout to Mac Brown. Nana no, no, Mac Brown. Ah, just like he's not even acknowledging. <laughs> he's not even acknowledging oh, you. No. Is that what gets your beer? Ah, no, 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 no. Big shout out to our beautiful mama. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, 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 boy. boy. <laughs> Everybody. Oh, don't worry. The applause won't change anything from today. Oh, it won't change. A week before you come on the show, 70% you must pay. The moment the show starts, 30% pay before you play. And you're one one. And you're one one. How do you see the future for, for yourself? Yeah, this is something I'm, I'm looking up to. Like, I'm not stopping now. Because mm. I give myself about... To, if I want to stop this whole thing, like to see myself in the 40s. In the 40s? Yeah, before I want to stop. So this is your full-time career? This is my full-time career. But we miss you on our turntables. DJ, um, floor manager is there. He's doing a good job, by the way. <laughs> DJ, do you want to play us something? Okay, show us what you've got. The most noise. Me, I don't know how to dance. I was rather asking him what he was doing. Anyway, speaking of which, well, the next person actually makes a lot of noise, but in a good way. And of course, he's gained notoriety for being one of the most vociferous MPs in the country but maybe he speaks to matters that pertain to you and that's why he's joining us on this show let's dig into his mind a little deeper and find out what the future looks like for him when we get back we'll head into parliament right here on the show don't go anywhere <laughs> Well, you're welcome back. And yes, our big conversation is happening right now with our very special guest. I mean, a lot of you know him within the political circles. Um, and like I said, he told the unvarnished truth about his stance when it comes to the LGBTQ community. But beyond that, I mean, there's a lot to know about him, a lot to learn from him. He's a two-time MP in Ghana's seventh parliament in the Fourth Republic. And he's quite, uh, you know, vociferous when it comes to issues. And so today, he joins us on the show. Have you met some George before? 
you haven't met him before. Is anybody in Ningo Pram Pram? Is anybody from that constituency? None of you. So he's not your MP. Well, we're moving you all to Ningo Pram Pram this afternoon. Are you ready for that? Yeah. Then make some noise for the man, Sam Joy! <laughs> George. Yeah. Charlie today. Drum of our Nibon. Oh, you want to drum away day inside. How's Ningo Pram Pram doing? I don't try to drum away. I feel Afi. Afi, I am Ebani now. Afi, Bene. No, me, I don't need any country, no. Ebami, I will. I'm a lady. I'm about in 2025 more. I don't think you understand the guy. Eh? Did you understand? Yeah. Oh, you understood everything? Because of Sam George. Well, you had John Mahama in there. So I, I told him that whatever is on his heart may come to pass. And he says then, 2024, John Mahama is coming yeah. as president. Yeah. Yes, and who are those who are saying no? Yes. 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 Hey, wow. <laughs> but how are you feeling about the elections, though? I mean, it's getting um, pretty tense, is it not? Well, um, for me, I think that 2024 is an election for the NDC to lose not for the NPP to win. Um, okay. Because if you're looking at basically what the NPP's track record is, they have absolutely no track record. Um, the NPP is planning to go in with violence like they've done. You're seeing Alan Tremanting have to resign because of violence and intimidation. they're planning to go in with violence as if it's deliberate. Um, oh, yes, it's intentional. They are targeted Alan Chamantin's people. They've hounded him out. He's run away. And if, if the crocodile is eating his own eggs, what will he do to the chicken's eggs? Politics and life favors the brave and courageous, not the timid. So he should have stayed? I think he should have, he should have toughed it out. Um, but I think that bottom line is Alan Chamantin shot himself in the foot when he accepted to be part of Akufuado's government. Rather, yes, he shouldn't have accepted. Absolutely, I mean, he 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 served in a government that has been abysmal. How can he extricate himself from it? I I, I mean, you are being sabotaged. So what was he doing there? Loyalty. So then we can't trust him to be loyal to Ghana. He's loyal to the MPP. I'm just assuming. I'm not. Well, saying... if that assumption is the case, why he stayed on? Then he's not fit to be president. If you were in his shoes, would you resign? Oh, absolutely. So if we are paying you a salary with our taxes, Kayai are mm. paying taxes to pay you a salary. Mm. You know, construction workers are paying taxes indirectly to fuel your Land Cruiser. Mm. And you are being sabotaged. And you couldn't come out to speak about it. You Asum waited. Jehini. Oh, President Mills was Asum Jehini, but he didn't sit down to accept sabotage. You've forgotten that President Mills of blessed memory stormed the harbor yeah. and shook the customs officers. Because he was president. Ah, but that's, you said Asum Jehini. I'm showing sure you uh, who Asum Jehini was. Trade Minister and President. Uh, but Trade Minister, was wasn't, he, he didn't get the title Asum Jehini, so why was he acting like <laughs> Asum Jehini? <laughs> oh, Sam. But, but Sam, if, if you say that, I mean, a section of Ghanaians have also said that if John Mahama should come, he has only four years. What really can he do? And why are we giving the mandate to, or why are people deciding to give the mandate to someone who has come, has been tried and tested, and it didn't work, which is why he was voted out? Okay. Three things you've said that I would... I would I'll discuss. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, there's a school of thought that says you should have one president, a president who serves seven years, one term, and goes. Mm. Because you see, you have the president come in, he's thinking about his second term from day one. Yeah. So Akufuado's first term, from day one, as soon as he, whilst he was swearing the oath at Independence Square, he was thinking of his re-election in 2020. Oh, any be <laughs> like re-election is on the age, right? mm. You understand me? Mm. And so when a president has a re-election, that becomes his focus. His focus is not delivering in his first term. Mm. And so when you even look at most of our two-term presidents, they do a lot more projects completion in their second mm -hmm. term. Second, People yeah. will tell you it's because the projects now had to start and all of that, but it's simply because a lot of the things in the first term are geared towards winning an election. Mm. Then a lot of things in the second term is about consolidating a legacy. Okay. Now, people benefit from the consolidation of the legacy. Now, when you have Ghana in the state where it is, where it is, I mean, in, in Chile, say, Atitia Pasca, mm. Pansa in cry, like it's, it's, it, 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 if this was a mechanic, we'll tell you the speedometer has finished. If it was Tego Sisters, they'll sing Ankamat. Ankamat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a colossal mess. We've never been this messed up before. You need a president who is focused on, on fixing the mess, mm. you know, building the Ghana we want. Because it's not about him and a re election, 
It's about building that Ghana that we all want. He comes in with, for four years. He knows that's all he's got. He has to make the tough decisions and take those decisions for us. Now, is this a president who couldn't do it before? Mm. For which reason he left? No, that's disputable. Mm. There were a lot of things that formed the basis okay. of John Mahama's loss in 2016 that post the loss have come out for, for the benefit of people. Mm. For example, a lot of people voted against John Mahama simply because they believe that John Mahama paid for a confirmed to fly to Burkina Faso. Mm. Only for them to find out later, when you read Manasseh Azuri's book, that there was nothing like that. It was a joke he made. Mm. But that was a very expensive joke. Yeah. That cost the president votes, okay? And, and, and again, you want to have a man who has the benefit of hindsight. I'm not saying John Mahama was perfect in his first term. I'll okay. be the last to say that. Okay. He's human, but he's learned from his mistakes. The mistakes that were made, the places that need tweaking. Mm. He's got the benefits to come back. It's like making President Kufour president again today. There are things he would do better because he's had the benefit to sit back and look at the decisions he took. Mm. How did they pan out? What was the effect of it? When he comes in, he's not going to make those same mistakes. Okay. So, and, and where you are now, where Ghana has been sent 20 years back, Today, Ghana's mm. economy is like, is, like, is like the year 2000, mm. before Kufo went to pick. Mm. That's where we are, mm. okay? Because for us to even get an IMF program, we have to go and beg some people to beg some people to beg some other people to go and beg the IMF before they give us a loan. That's how bad we are. We're not credit worthy to even take a loan on our own strength. We have to beg the Germans, beg the Americans, to go and beg the Chinese. To I mean, all kinds of beggings, you know, mm. beggar squared, you know? <laughs> 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 so so you, you, need, you need a man who has seen it before who has seen the pitfalls, yeah. who from day one can hit the ground running, is not now coming to experiment. Okay. You understand? Because he knows how the machinery of governance works. He knows he has only four years to deliver and cement a legacy. But he to needs money. To build the Ghana we, want, we, we need. He Sorry? needs money in the system to be able to fix some of these problems. Oh, yes. You know, do we have the money? <laughs> the money, dear, if I tell you we have the money, I'll be lying to so you. So how will he do it? Oh, you see... That's the benefit of having a solid team around him. For example, the president had spoken, uh, and I'm calling him president, but I let, let it come you to pass. You mean President Tekufado? No, John Dramani Mahama. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> 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 speaking, speaking at Academic City, he, he spoke about building a, a, an ICT-driven economy, yeah. where he was looking at private sector investment to to bring in $3 billion mm. in ICT infrastructure. Now, you see, you have a government that is... All, you have two kinds of governments. When you look at the Muhammad experience and the Kufa Dubaumia experience, one is one that does less talk, more action, or more action, less talk, MALT, M-A-L-T. More that, action, less talk. Isn't that Alan Chemati? Oh, he, he stole it he from... He said, talk less, talk more, act less, or something like that. When he launched GTP... He cried, he's, conf he's cry yeah. confused. <laughs> 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 But, <laughs> you know, John Mahama spoke about this, this, this plan to have $3 billion of investment in ICT. Mm -hmm. And anybody who understands the ICT knows, uh, sp space knows that for every dollar you invest, properly invested and managed, you, yeah. you reap $10. Yeah. And to let you see that he has a holistic plan. Two weeks later, he gave another speech and spoke about the 24-hour economy. Mm. Now, people don't see the linkages, but if you had ICT infrastructure, that allowed Ghana to become the BPO and KPO um, um, hub for Africa, BPO business process outsourcing, yeah. KPO knowledge process outsourcing, where we're running call centers, we're doing digital processing for multinationals outside mm. of the country, like mm. what is happening in Mauritius, like what Morocco is trying to do, like what India has, has mm. done to boost their economies. When you have those come in here on the back of private investment, the three billion he was speaking about, and then you, you can then begin to build your 24 hour economy. Okay. Because giving Ghana's GMT time zone. Yeah, giving us a lot of, yeah. Giving Ghana's GMT time mm. zone, you can then have 24 hour cycles. Okay. Because at the time China is going to bed, New York is waking up. Yeah. And if you're offering services as a BPO to a business in New York, and also offering one to a business in Beijing. What it then means is 24 hours around the clock, you can run three shifts. Mm -hmm. So if you had a 100 capacity KPO or BPO center, you could employ 300 people. Okay. Because one will work from 12 midnight to 8 a.m. Another will work from 8 a.m., you know, so uh, for, cyclical, for, yeah. for, till about, about uh, what, 8, 8 to about 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then the other will work from 4 p.m. to 12. To 12. You have three shifts. And that's how you deal with unemployment. It's not okay. rocket science, but you need to be smart. Mm. And being smart is not about looking smart and talking smart. We've seen someone who talked smart and gave us all the lectures 
Central University Distinguished Le uh, Speakers Series. You remember? 72 now, questions. Uh, 170. 170, uh-huh. I've If the fundamentals are weak, <laughs> the exchange date will expose, expose you. I've been a joke palogo ke pasasa. <laughs> and he was laughing at himself that, oh, yes, I said it, but I mean, you know. So it's not about talk. And I said, you've seen two experiences, the German Ahama experience, which is about action, getting the job done mm. without a lot of trills and, and flair and all of that. John got things done. People can understand how in four years, John Mahama was able to get the Greater Accra Regional Hospital built. If Yang Kwanta Regional Hospital was done, you had the Regional Maritime uh, 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 Hospital okay. also built. Across the country, we saw the infrastructure. We, the Bank of Ghana under John Mahama mm. built the Bank of Ghana Hospital, which became the saving grace for Akufuado's ministers when they contracted HIV, uh, COVID. The, sorry. Mm. When they contracted mm. COVID. Mm. <laughs> Okay. HIV day, COVID you know. Okay. But when they contracted COVID, it was the Bank of Ghana Hospital mm. built under John Dramani Mahama and Abdul Nashiru Ishahaku as governor of the bank that saved the lives of Nanado's ministers. Now Nanado is president. Mm. What is the Bank of Ghana doing? They've declared a loss of 60 billion, 55 billion negative equity. They are building a 250 million dollar headquarters. Mino mm. Okay. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I'm just showing you the difference between the two. You had John Mahama build you the Tema interchange, build you, build you the uh, Kwame Nkrumah interchange, Obechebi Lamte interchange, started the, the Pokwasi interchange, mm. built the, the Kumasi International Airport, Tamale International Airport phase one. Phase two was already in the pipes mm. that these guys came to take over. Today, what are we seeing? English What have they done with the money? Yes, a combat do because Osuno Tisikano so Osuno I mean, they have messed up the economy in such a way that look, you need someone who understands the way our economy works. You see, our economy is not a textbook economy. Okay. When you have people like Baumia who don't understand, and all they know is true and poor. Is that, is that what? It is. Oh, Baumia is a true and poor economist. He's a true and poor economist. Absolutely. Wale Wale Adam Smith. Hey. He's a true and poor economist. All he does is he goes to read the theory, comes to stand there and wax lyrical and repeats it. Okay, now we've given you the job. Mm -hmm. Go and do it. He says give him the mandate and he will do it as president. Ah, you were head of the economic management team. And the economy has moved in, you said they say it's moving forward. And I say it's because- It's turned the corner. It's turned the corner. You see, when you are going around in circles, if you're okay, you are turning corners, but you are going around and coming back to the same place. You turn another corner back to the same place. That's what is happening. And I said it. Me, my first degree is in engineering. Uh -huh. In engineering, we know that you can have motion in either way. Yeah. So for them, they are moving forward, but they are moving forward in reverse gear. How, how is that possible? <laughs> no. When you put that thing in, in, the car is moving forward. Yeah, but in reverse gear. Yeah, so it becomes a negative. Do you understand me? Mm. You see, in engineering, the scale is not zero. Uh -huh. to 100. Uh -huh. The scale goes from 0 to 100 and 0 to negative. Both are movements. Okay. You understand me? So you had movement from 0 heading towards 100, positive, uh -huh. under John Mahama. Then these guys came, took the bus. And then it, when John Mahama had gotten to gear 4, they said, oh, no, this gear doesn't look fine. Let's put it in the R. You know, the, <laughs> R, the R looks nicer than the 1, 2, 3, 4. You know, when you take the gear stick, uh, all the, the other R gears are numbers. Exactly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Mm -hmm. R looks different. Oh, then this is the nice one because he did chew and pour. So he put it in R and then stepped on the tin. And then the car is moving. Why are you in the car? How, how we are in the see? car. <laughs> you, if, if you want to see, if you want to see the car, go to Kotoka this evening and go and look at the Everybody number of people at the leaving. airport. Does it not worry you? Ah, why wouldn't they leave? Bella, you self sitting here. If you get a chance, you jackpot. How do you know that? Oh. I haven't told you that I want to leave. I want to serve my country. Yes. If you get a chance, how would much, you leave? How much was I can't leave? Where am I going? LGBT before Mama Kwai. They have blocked. <laughs> <laughs> See, they blocked you let from, me ask you from a question. their countries. You know, and this is just, I mean, mm. take your salary. Mm. Don't go to when your mama left, though. Mm -hmm. You see, I don't even want to make it hard for you. Because if I say you should take it to when your mama left, we'll end the show now because you start crying. Ah. Yes, you get emotional and start crying. <laughs> So I don't want, I want the show to, to reach its end. So <laughs> don't go to 2016. 
Uh -huh. Go back to 2021, uh -huh. 7th January, uh -huh. when Akufuado swore his second term. Now, your salary converted to dollars. How much it was in dollars? In your head, don't mention it. Uh, just convert it to dollars. And all of you sitting here do that work. Convert your salary now <laughs> into dollars when Nakufuado won his second term. At that time, the exchange rate was 6 to a CD. Mm -hmm. Many is 12, hello, 11.8. 11 mm, 11 no uh -huh. Now convert your salary now. In two years, eight months, see what Nakufuado has done to your salary. Someone flipping beggars at McDonald's mm. earns more than you who works in a bank. Mm. Bank, oh, tie pumping this heat <laughs> with one tie and suit. And you are sweating. sweating. Akufado hits. You see, Akufado has done cry. The angels that are supposed to blow air are refusing to blow air in Accra. Hey, Sam George. Oh, we will blame Akufado for everything. I mean, is we it, are using his marking scheme. They blame John Mahama. When people had dysentery or had a, a constipation, they blame wow. John Mahama. We are using their marking scheme, oh. I'm a marking scheme, not what you're saying. So you're flipping the coin. Oh. More like. Oh, but, we're but, just giving them a measure of But you talk medicine. about the fact that if you had a chance, you won't leave this country because, or maybe you would have wanted to leave, but because you've been well, blocked, more like. Oh, no, I've not. They, 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 I wouldn't say I've been blocked. They can't block me. Mm. Ah, can you catch the wind? Have they put you on any red alert? Yes. I heard you say that. Something about money laundering yeah, or so. Yeah, they claim I'm doing money laundering. Are the, you doing the, money laundering? Show me where the money is. Let me launder it. Like. You don't have the money? <laughs> I, I don't even have a washing machine to talk of laundry. No, I have one for clothes. I don't have one for money. <laughs> but but this whole LGBTQ, yeah. um, anti-LGBTQ mm -hmm. campaign that you're pushing, yeah. I mean, I saw you respond to the um, the ambassador to the U.S., from the U.S. to Ghana, yeah, about yeah, yeah. that statement that she Virginia made. Virginia Palmer. But there have been a lot of people who have said that maybe you're being a, a bit too hard on the issue and you should soften a bit. Do you agree to that? Why should I soften a bit? Bella, if I came to your house... Mm. And I said to you that homo me. Mm -hmm. I want to come and eat, and you have food. Mm -hmm. And then I come to your house, and then I tell you that me, the food, I like to pass it through my ears and my nose, so mm. not through my mouth. Mm -hmm. So your house, your food, mm -hmm. I'm the guest. Mm -hmm. But you can't. I won't be comfortable with you eating through your mouth. Because mm -hmm. if you eat through your mouth, you make me uncomfortable. Because I like to eat the food through my ears. So don't eat the food through your mouth. Will you accept it? Is that what is happening? Ah, we have our culture, we have our own norms, our customs. Our customs are not pro-LGBTQ. Mm. You are coming to our country to come and do business or come and do whatever here. Then you say that I should leave the God-given highway mm. and go enter the gutter. That's, That's what it is. But have you seen quite a number of young people who are I wouldn't say involved in LGBTQ because I'm not in the room with them when they do it. But we've seen a number of them who are effeminate. And they, you know, showcase some of these female tendencies, especially even for the boys, and some for the girls as well. They showcase male tendencies. And they're saying that it doesn't necessarily mean that I am part of the community. But now, if this bill is passed, it sort of puts me in that spotlight where everybody assumes that once I'm effeminate, then I am. And that goes against me. Well, you see, I keep saying that people need to read. People shouldn't behave like Baumia. They must read oh, and understand. How is he catching stray bullets? Because he doesn't read to understand. He just reads to pour. Read to understand. Oh. If you read the bill, the bill actually criminalizes victimization mm. of alleged members of that community. Okay. Again, the bill doesn't say that because I look at you and you behave effeminate and you are a man, bam, you are jailed. But no. you know that there are people who also are, are stigmatized against such people. <laughs> And that's what I'm saying. The bill takes care of that. Okay. You can go to jail for three years mm. for verbally assaulting somebody without mm. proof. Mm. You can go to jail for three years. The bill says that. Mm. Okay, so how, how, how is that a problem? Your freedoms can be curtailed on three grounds. Mm. On the grounds of public health, public safety, and public morality. Public morality. Do you want us to start teaching our children that you see two women and you can call one daddy and one mommy? We've already seen it on our TV sets. Absolutely, and that is why when this bill passes, all TV stations would now be careful what they show. So on the same basis, when this law passes, hopefully before Christmas this year. Or before Christmas. Oh, yes, Okay. Yes. You know, when it is passed, it then means that your editorial policy will need to take into cognizance the content of movies or, 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 or videos that you air mm. to ensure that it does not infringe on the law. It is not against your editorial policy to... We are not de de determining for you mm. what to show. 
Yeah. So that's not press gagging the press. Okay. But what we are saying is we're giving you the parameters within because even today, mm -hmm. you are not allowed to just show any Anything. and everything. But that's for the channels that operate here. What about the streaming platforms? Because whether we like it or not, the likes of, let's say, Netflix. Yes. Now, literally every movie you watch, there's an element yes. of LGBTQ yes. in there. Yes. How are we going to control something like that? Well, those, those are things that we'll continue to explore. Because there are countries, for example, that have blocked some of these streaming platforms. Yeah. And I've said to them, before you operate here, you need to clean up what is, what is available in our, our region. Mm. You understand me? And look, it's, it's a wave that's coming. In October, in, in October, no, April this year, okay. 26 speakers of, of parliament across Africa's continent mm -hmm. met in Uganda, mm -hmm. you know, and they committed to one thing. They're waiting for Ghana to pass this bill. They're going to replicate Ghana's bill across the African continent. And oh, once that happens, you then begin to see Africa speak with one voice okay. and begin to say to the streaming platforms, you need to consider what is coming into our space. Then we should respect every culture. Oh, we should respect. Imagine everybody. the Ghanaian high Com ambassador to US. Sam, Sam, what formation have you been doing lately? One zero one one zero zero. Today, today like this, before God and man, I did half and I've done zero so far. Which one is half and zero? In no cocoa. <laughs> cocoa without bread. Eh. So that's not one. They share one. Oh, but then uh, people but are doing half. How, how, how do you compare people are cocoa? How do you how do you fish? No, but how do you compare? Kenke is heavy. Okay, you so that's compare, one. You can't compare Komi to Koko, Alo Gobe to Koko. Their Komini is not Komini. Their Komini is not Komini. Chale is crazy. <laughs> but, but when you're not doing politics, what do you do? Because it looks hmm. like you eat politics, you drink politics, you sleep politics, literally your entire life. I'm lying by my wife. Happy anniversary, by the way. You recently yeah. celebrated your, your wedding 11th, anniversary. 11th 11 anniversary. years. Yeah. How's it been? It's been, it's been, it's been, it's been a good journey. Mm. Um, marriage is work. It is. But it's a good, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good exercise, a good enterprise. Divorce Especially when you right. find the right person, when you're with the right person. Mm. Yeah, I mean, mar marriage is not a noun, it's a verb. It's a verb, it's a doing word. But the divorce rates are high. What are we not doing right? It's because people have short fuses. People, people, people have watched too many telenovelas. That's why marriages yeah, are ending yeah, so quickly. Yeah. Movies, movies have taught us a certain culture of impatience. Mm. No two people can live together without issues. Mm. But you see, the movies that we've imported, and you see, that's one thing that the LGBTQ people are doing with the movie. I'll just take you back a bit. In 2001, when I went to the university in Kumasi, it was, if anybody heard that somebody was doing money sacrifice, human sacrifice for money, Charlie, like, yeah, it was yeah. a scary thing. Mm -hmm. So we've been accustomed to it by the power of movies. Mm. You understand mm. me? And so that's, that's really the, the challenge of marriages as well in young couples. I mean, in most movies, the guy does something, she doesn't like it, she calls her lawyer, she sues him, then she moves on, yeah. and then she meets another guy, and then she's better, or the guy moves on. I mean, that's not real life, man. But no, don't movies what reflect parents, real life what, situations? No, movies are scripts. They say cut, take again, cut, take again. Life, there's no cut, mm -hmm. and retake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you're, when you're angry, <laughs> when you're angry at your wife, what do you do? So that's the point. You see, I can be angry at my wife, and I mean, me, when I'm angry, I'm angry. And mm. I free my mind and all of that, and I've stopped that. Because I've realized that even when she was wrong, because mm. I freed my mind, after we settle the matter, mm -hmm. then they now say, eh, but you said this. Yeah. So me who was offended, now I have to now start saying, I have to start yeah, boy, I beg. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. So now I've decided I won't talk. But you see, what you must learn is that even the tongue and the teeth fight in the same mouth. Yeah. So you and your spouse will have issues. The only basis that me, I would ever support walking away from a marriage is physical and emotional abuse. Okay. That and you'd leave. That, that's a no-no. But even that there are families that would say, oh, no, it doesn't matter, uh, work uh, it out. Uh, <laughs> you 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 have obituary in your house uh, very soon. Mm. The dog doesn't go Sh back. Should we control how social media is used in this country? I think that it's something that the government is looking at, and it's okay. something I support. Okay. Um, we we need to have some kind of legislation that not 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 censures, but regulates the use of social media. Mm. Because you see, there are many young people, Bella, mm -hmm. who have had to go and borrow money because they don't even have. Yeah. borrow money and end up sending that money to some criminal somewhere who claims he's some George and is offering them a job mm -hmm. because the person has created a fake account.
and we're not doing enough to clamp down on those kinds of fake accounts. Yeah. The, the, the dissemination of false news and mm -hmm. misinformation and, and, and disinformation. We're not focusing on those things well enough as a country. So it's important that we look at those things and clamp down. I keep telling people, and let me use this platform. If anybody reaches you on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter, and comes into your DM and asks you, how are you doing? Mm. How's your day been? Do you know me? I have a job for you. Look, look at me, Sam George. You think I'm going to leave everything I'm doing? I'll leave LGBTQ, leave church, leave my wife, leave my constituency, leave my children and come and be asking you, how are you in your inbox? <laughs> and offering you a job. I won't. It won't happen. I won't. And even if I had a job somewhere, I have constituents. Mm. There are the people I would take those, those jobs to. So why would I come to you? I don't know you from anywhere on Facebook, and then come and tell you I'm giving you a job, and tell you that there's some protocol officer somewhere, yeah. go and give him 1,500, and you two go and borrow money. Hey, I'll bet you are, bro. Because it is not me. No MP is going to reach out to you. It's not just Sam George. No MP will reach out to you on Facebook offering you a job or offering you travel experience. I know people are desperate because of how bad Akufado has kept the economy and how bad Baumia has kept the country. We always circle back to Akufado and Baumia. Oh, I told you. Do you sometimes feel like you would have been better off without politics at all? You know, before politics, I wanted to go into the army. So I don't know which would have been better. Army! Hey! <laughs> Thank my mother. My eh? mother literally knelt down and begged me not to. Why did she but say I picked the forms. Why did she say, would you have made it hide? Ah, but I'm taller than many people. I stand with some of the generals, I'm as tall as them, or taller than some of them. There are people who have gone and they told them they were too short. I'm saying that I'm taller than some of the people who are generals in our army today. So, so what do you I'm mean? not sure too. Huh? I'm, I'm not saying <laughs> I'm not saying that, but sometimes we hear ridiculous excuses. Oh, yeah, but I mean, I mean my mates I picked forms with, one of them is a lieutenant colonel now, oh. and about three of them are majors. So I'll most likely have either been a lieutenant colonel or a major by now. Oh, in that's the army. nice. Yeah. Do you regret yeah. not going into the army? No, I'm thankful to God I didn't go into the army because uh, the reasons I was going to the army, What's I'm were not the so proud of them now. What no, were the okay. reasons? It's okay. What were the reasons? It's okay. Hey, then they were very serious. Yes, that's why my mother prayed against it and knelt down and go all the pastors she knows to talk to me. So I like the politics like that. And, and you're doing, you know, pastoral duties as well. You're oh, a yeah. deacon. No, no, church. I'm an elder. Hey, elder, me sorry. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, church has always been a part of my life growing up in, in, in the house. I grew up in a house where I went to church every day. And I'm not lying. Every, every day. day? Yes. My mother was a women's leader. Uh -huh. So Monday there was women's fellowship. Uh -huh. I would follow her to go and sit in the women's fellowship. Tuesday was men's fellowship. I would go with my father. Wednesday was teaching service. I would go with him. Thursday, my father was also a cell leader. Uh -huh. So when they go for the cell leaders teaching before the go cell him. meeting, I would go with him. Friday, we had all night or deliverance service. Then Saturday was evangelism. Then Sunday was church service. And then in the evening was home cell meeting. Yeah. So your whole life was about church. I, I was a ch I'm a church boy. Me, I grew up in the church. In church, yeah. you don't feel buga buga again. Ah, the, kingdom of, the kingdom of God suffered violence. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> don't, don't your church members sometimes say, that we are not chief, you. Oh, but in church, I'm, I'm free and friendly with everybody. Oh, yes, but then when they see you out of the... You oh, know. <laughs> some of them come and comment on my post and say, oh, now, God bless you. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> they like it. Uh, but don't you see my... You yeah, know who my, my senior pastor is? I do. Arjuna Sai. I do. If you, bring, if you come and cross him wrongly, you show you the power of God. I, I hear you like to dance a lot. Me? Yes. This is your wooden floor. It's not good enough. It's not strong enough. Why do you jump forward? I, I do a combination of the fire dance and the kumbu dance. <laughs> we, we, we have a game to play. Not a game necessarily. But we're going to do something very interesting. We'll take him out of his Don't comfort zone. Don't put me zone. on the spot, though. Oh, we won't. Don't worry. Yeah. Honorable Sam George, we'll be right back to continue. <laughs> Conversation so far. Yeah. Are you ready for us to play a game? Yeah. Well, Honorable Sam George is here. He's the MP for Ningo Prom Prom constituency. And enough of the talk. Let's go play a game, shall we? Hmm. Okay, please come this mm. way. Don't worry, it's easy. I'm sure you'll figure it out. So, so please stay behind this podium. Do you want to preach or you want to sing? Uh, I, I don't mind preaching, but I want an uh, Asha by my side. What, when, I what finish, when I finish, I'll take off you. From who? Ah, it's a congregation. I've opened a church. Hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> oh, you want to be the Asha, eh? Okay, so we're going to play... She, she's Kenofuriata's kind of sister. <laughs> hey, me need Anyway, so we're going to play Don't Forget the Lyrics, Sam. 
Hey. All we're gonna do is DJ Filter is here. He'll play a song, stop it at a point. If you know the lyrics to the song, if you know, you know how to continue it, you turn on your lights and you get to answer. If not, I win. <laughs> do you understand? <laughs> I understand. You understand. <laughs> Whose side are you on? NDC or independent? NDC. NDC. You don't want third force. No, 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 no. Independent candidate. Third force. In, in independent, you'll be competing with Paul Ballot. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so are you ready? We're going to count down together. Filter, are you ready? All right, so let's go. Three, two, one, first song, let's go. Correct. You know, you know I knew. Oh, I knew. But money, okay, Shakio. Well, blame my test. You like you like Perez music? Uh, Perez music is a is a is a gift and blessing to this country when mm. it comes to gospel music. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I see. Okay, please turn it off. Next one. Uh, you know, you see, she's behaving like Jimmy. Nasa. Nasa. Oh, oh, money, mia. Mami handkerchiefo. Oh, that's correct. Ah, but, hey! but I thought you would end the song before. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's let's go. Hey. One 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 one. <laughs> don't know me. Wait, but how do you continue the song? What are we supposed to say? I open up to nobody. I've never yes. heard this before. <laughs> Some judge you are wrong. Oh, seven. That's wrong. Oh. Where he ended the song, he had to continue. So oh, seven, oh, is never wrong, half <laughs> of an egg baby light, okay? Okay, give us easy song. My, oh, oh. The time of the chase, I'm the no money day. My, oh. I hear this is your See my heart, my poshito, I the grind for my kenke. My, oh. Like the air, I the feel long for everywhere I they go. My, oh. See the money, baby, come chop on for me. Me too, no son, see see. Kitty, kitty, or come bro, footy tree, na new year, we see, we see. We see move dress, ma, oh siri, siri. On penny who wants me, need the chili, chili. Me baby need brownie, golden tree, chocolate. Me try to lie, each and every day, me never be the my own. I hear this was a song you, invi you invited Samini yeah. to perform at your Zamini, anniversary Z party. Zamini, Zamini, they owe me money because I pay him to make a come perform with me now perform the song. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, word out to Zamini then. Please return the money <laughs> at this point. Anyway, let's go. Okay, so how many for him? Plenty. Three? Twelve. <laughs> Let's carry on. Okay, so how do we score the math? <laughs> half, half. So 12 and half, three and half. Hey. Ah, one and half for the way. Do we have more? I, I told you she's like our gun sister, Jimensa. <laughs> Spouse balance, you're on the spouse balance. <laughs> okay, next one. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. <laughs> Is she singing or playing instrumentals? <laughs> because you were ending the thing. So I chose the easiest part. 15, three and a half. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, I got it. Ozzy, Ozzy. Is that what he was saying? Eh. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Hey. Liquor, don't pour my liquor. 
I am for you, my Churchill, daddy, I mean, I mean, too little. It's a young boy, Oh, baby, uh... So, 17, three and a half. I sang liquor, don't pour my liquor. Isn't that what he says? What is it? Liquor, don't pour my liquor. Don't no. Don't become a killer. My healer. Ah. Uh, uh-huh. Hey. Uh-huh. I'm a church girl, that's why. So I don't I don't know some of these songs. Last one. Last one. Money. He didn't say, hey! Uh-huh. <laughs> You see, my angels are at work. <laughs> so my, who got my, it? My, my angels are not Ian Tafram and Nimoka Free. Hey. You remember them? Hey. Cards for me because I'm extremely confident of the work I've done. Okay. And I'm extremely confident that the people of Ningo Pram Pram are level headed and know what they want. They know mm. what is best for them. Um, they look at the representation I give to them and they look at the options on the other side. Um, and like I've said, this election, we intend to get 100,000 votes for the NDC from 50,000 votes. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to hold you to that and, oh, no, and hope mean, that it actually I mean, happens. Yeah, I mean, in 2020, I said we're going to beat the NPP with a gap of 20,000 votes. Gap. Mm -hmm. Because in 2016, I beat them with a gap of 10,000. And the people of Ningo Pram Pram said to me, young man, in four years, what you did, we appreciate it. So we won't let you beat MPP with a gap of 20,000. Mm -hmm. We'll rather make it 30,000. Mm. So I beat the MPP with 30,000. And, and post that, I am confident that they would work with me to get the 100,000 votes for the NDC and John Mahama and Sam George in 2024. We'll deliver. Well, we're looking forward to that. Are you planning on running for president anytime soon? Hmm? President, anytime soon. In, you know. Are you planning? President of Nungo Pram Pram. No, no, president of Ghana. Of Ghana. My steps are ordered by the Lord, and um, for now, what he said to me is to be MP. Okay, so, so if he says be president, you will be? If he says I should be president, it's not me that will be. He will make me. He will make you president. Yeah, but for now, I don't. That's not my headache. It's not something I'm thinking Would about. Would you be I'm a not, fine president? I'm not even old enough to be president in Ghana. We need young people. No, but I'm not. I'm not yet forty. The You're not forty. The yet. constitution says. Uh, you see, you've opened your mouth. The constitution says you must be forty. I'm not even forty. So Sam, not you're not forty yet. No, I'm thirty-eight. What? Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. <laughs> I'm thirty-eight. It shocks a lot of How people. How did I not know this? Yeah, yeah, I'm not yet forty. So I can't. I, when people say Rani made vice president, I, I look at them and I laugh. Yeah. Some people call me and say they have prophecy from God that I will be made your mama Rani made. Then I tell them, I say, oh, so for what did you drink? <laughs> <laughs> because, because you're not qualified. Because it's not, yet. It's not even gonna happen. Yeah. You know? So that's not something I'm thinking about at all. Right now, my focus is on delivering and serving the people of Ningo Pram Pram as best as I can. And um, for me, the future is, my, is, is forward. And, okay. and that's, what, that's what matters to me. Well, thank you so much, Sam George, for joining yeah, us. Sure so we're going to do the Terminator dance. I hear you're very good at it. Terminator. You don't know how to do Terminator. I feel your name, man. Dabi, I'm just showing ah, okay. you that I'm a dancer, professional Ish. dancer. <laughs> Come for joining us. Make some noise for Honorable Sam George. <laughs> and yes, he's been our special guest on the day show today. I hope you enjoyed the conversation thoroughly. I did, and well, I'm sure that by now everybody has a bit of it that they're discussing in their homes. But I want to say a big thank you, of course, to Dr. Tash Furniture for our lovely furniture. You can find them on the Spintex Road, close to Manette Junction. Walk in there, of course, mention Berlamundi, and you'll be sorted with some quality yet affordable furniture. And also thank you to you guys. I appreciate you, you have no idea. Yes! You are too much fun. We have to do this over and over and over again. Deal? Awesome, and make some noise for DJ Filter! <laughs> well, yes, it's been enjoyable, and when we see you again next week, we'll have another exciting guest for you, don't worry. This is the day show, of course, we deliver. It is possible. Oh, it's not? Okay, all right, it is possible. Not any political term, no. No, not that one. Yeah, we're just saying it's possible on our show. So we'll see you again next week. My name is Bella Mundi. Love you.